Income Tax 2023-2024, Child Tax Credit and Other Dependent Credit Tax Software Example. Get ready and some coffee because we're looking to get the tax man off our back with Income Tax Preparation 2023-2024. Here we are in our first, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, uh, actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us but but that's okay whatever because our merchandise is is better than their stupid stuff anyways like our cpa six pack shirts a must-have for any pool or beach time mixing money with muscle always sure to attract attention yeah even if you're not a cpa you need this shirt so you can like pull in that iconic cpa six pack stomach muscle vibe man you know that CPA six pack everyone envisions in their mind when they think CPA. Yeah, as a CPA, I actually and unusually don't have tremendous abs. However, I was blessed with a whole lot of belly hair. Yeah, allowing me to sculpt the hair into a nice CPA six pack like shape, which is highly attractive. Yeah, may maybe the shirt will help you generate some belly hair too. And if it does, make sure to let me know. Maybe I'll try wearing it on my head. And, and yes, I know six pack isn't spelled right, but three letters is more efficient than four. So I trimmed it down a bit, okay? It's an improvement. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Form 1040 example problem using LaCert tax software. You don't need tax software to follow along, but if you have access to software, great tool to run scenarios with. You can also get access to forms, schedules, instructions at the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Standard starting point with Adam Taxman. Just try to avoid a dang tax man living in beverly hills 90210 starting as a single filer no dependents w-2 income starting at that 100,000 standard deduction for a single filer at the 13,850, giving us taxable income 86,150, which we can see and mirror in our income tax formula in excel 100,000 standard deduction 13,850, getting the taxable income 86,150, relying on the software to calculate the tax at 14,266, which we can see on page two of the form 1040, 14,266. We are now going to be looking at the child tax credit, which is here on line 19. And we also have a component for the additional child tax credit down here on line 28. So remember the general idea with the credits, they are good, similar to deductions being good, however different from deductions because if we had a dollar of a deduction, it would be over here included in page one as part of the decrease in our taxable income, the impact on that then only being in relation to the progressive tax system <clears throat> that we have depending on the rate that we are in. Whereas, if we get a deduction down here, whether it be this portion of the credit or this credit down here, we will typically get a full dollar of deduction. So that's why, for example, we have the credits in the same area as the additional taxes, because if we had additional taxes, that would be a dollar dollar for dollar increase. Additional taxes, such as we've seen before for like self-employment tax and the credits would be a dollar for dollar decrease. Then why do we have these two different categories then on the credits? Well, the ones up top are what we're gonna be calling typically the non-refundable credits, which usually will not take the total tax below zero because if they took the total tax below zero, it wouldn't really be a tax then now, would it? It would be something like a welfare or benefit type of program. So these credits up top will typically be limited by the amount of the tax, whereas the credits down below are not possibly going to be limited by the amount of tax, which could bring the tax liability below zero, in which case we still might call it a refund, but it's not really a refund at that point in time. We're basically using the tax system, not just to collect taxes, but as a form of welfare or benefit or safety net 
type of program. And that's why we have the additional child tax credit down below. So that's going to complicate things a bit so we can break out the refundable uh, and non-refundable. So the refundable portion is matched out in the payments section. And that kind of makes sense because the payments that we make, these are withholdings that we make from like a W-2, for example, would be a dollar for dollar kind of decrease to the amount that we owe um, uh, or the amount uh, the, of refund, increase to the amount of refund we, we would get. And the credit is going to be the same in form of f the calculation. It's going to be a dollar dollar impact, which would either increase the amount of refund, even if we had a tax liability possibly below zero, or uh, decrease the amount we owe. Okay, so that's the general idea. Now, if we go back to page one, the credits are tied intimately. These credits, the child tax credit, the uh, other dependent credit are tied intimately to, of course, dependents. So then we want to kind of remember the idea of what qualifies as a dependent, because if they qualify as a dependent, we get the benefits uh, from that, which is typically some kind of credit. And the first credit we would like to get, the bigger credit would be the child tax credit. The second best default credit would be the, the other dependent credit. And some cases we might not get either of these, but that's fairly rare. But you still might have a benefit from the dependents because it could, in some cases, bring your filing status up from single to head of household. So those are the benefits of having basically a dependent. So you can go back to the Form 1040 instructions if you have questions about qualifications for a dependent. There's this nice flow chart that can help us go through whether someone qualifies. And looking through the flow chart reminds us of the order that we want to be thinking of. Meaning we first think, are they a qualifying child? If they are a qualifying child for being a dependent, the next question then is that qualifying child qualifying for the child tax credit? The child tax credit being a little bit more restrictive, having things like different age limits, uh, for example, rather than qualifying as a dependent. If they are a child, they qualify for a dependent, but don't qualify for the child tax credit, possibly because they're too old or something like that, then we still could possibly have them as a dependent and have them give us the benefit of the other dependent credit. If they don't qualify as a child, then we have no chance to get the child tax credit, of course. But if they're a dependent, we still might get the other dependent credit. That's the general idea. And again, remember, if you're talking about a uh, single person, someone who is unmarried, the filing statuses available to us are either single, which is the worst, or head of household. To be head of household, you typically need a dependent. So one dependent could change the filing status from single to head of household. Once you're in head of household, another child isn't going to improve your filing status above head of household, right? The next step from there would be going to married filing joint in terms of step ups in filing statuses. Although I wouldn't recommend getting married just simply to step up the filing status. That's not probably, probably not the the ground basis on which to uh, build the relationship or anything. But that's the idea from a from a tax standpoint, uh, generally. So the other thing to keep in mind, of course, is that you can't have dependents qualifying for both the child tax credit and other dependent credits on the same return or on different returns, right? You can't you can't double dip that way. You get one or the other and you can't use the same dependent on multiple tax returns to be giving different people benefits. And that often is going to be a problem in cases where you have two parents that are not together, they're divorced or they're not married or whatever. And then there's a question of who's going to be able to claim the child because the child has a lot of tax benefits uh, linked to them. So unfortunately, that leads to kind of financial struggles on top of any other kind of struggle with regards to those situations. Okay, so let's add a dependent and say they qualify for the child tax credit. So I'm going to go back on over and say, let's put a dependent in place. So I'm going to say we have Sam Taxman uh, is the son and they're going to qualify as a dependent uh, and as a qualifying child. So I'm going to go back on over and say, all right, so now I data input there. There's the dependent. There's uh, Sam the taxman. 
uh, that the, the, uh, Social Security number son, and we have the checked off box for the child tax credit. So we have the same calculation on the first page. Now, also note that that would probably push Sam up from single to head of household. So let me push that up as well, just to see that if I go to page two, just so you could say, see, here's the single brackets, 10, 12, 22, and here's the brackets. Let's boost it up to head of household so you can see the impact. Okay, so now we've boosted up to head of household. If I go to page two and look at the, the tax brackets, you can see we have different and more favorable tax brackets. So you might be saying, hey, that's okay. You can take the kid as a, as a dependent. Wait a second. This is significant. And I want, I want the kid on my tax return. Right, that's how it goes. But in any case, here's the, so we could have a calculation here. And then we have the child, the child tax credit or credit for other dependents. So here's uh, the 2000 that is being included and all of the, it's not taking us below zero. So the entire amount of the credit can be consumed as a non-refundable component because it's not taking our, our tax liability below zero and our income is not too high that the credit is phasing out. So here's our uh, worksheet for it. You could take a look at the worksheet, but there is no credit limit that's in effect right now. So let's go to the form 8812. So form 8812, or uh, this is schedule 8812. And this is the credits for qualifying children and other dependents. So we have then part number one. I won't go through it in too much detail, but just to get the idea of it. So we have the child tax credit and other dependents on part one. And then on part two, page two, that's where we have the additional child tax credit, which we don't really need at this point because we didn't have that refundable component. And then certain filers who uh, have three or more qualifying children and bona fide residents of Puerto Rico, which is kind of more of a specialty type case. So we have line one, enter the amount from form uh, 1040. So we've got the amount from form 1040. This could be complicated if you're in Puerto Rico, form 2555, foreign income situations, form uh, 4563. So we're gonna add those up. There's our uh, line three, the 100,000. Number of qualifying children under age 17. So there's our age limit. Remember that there's different age limits with regards to whether they qualify as a dependent versus qualifying for the child tax credit. And then multiplying that times uh, times one is going to give us our 2,000 number of other dependents, including any qualifying children who are not under age 17. So if we had other dependents that still qualify as a dependent, but not for the child tax credit, they would go here to calculate the other dependent credit, multiply line six by 500, that would be for the other dependent credit, multiply lines five uh, and seven, that's for the child tax credit, there's our $2,000, into the amount shown below for filing status, married filing joint or single, there's single, this is the income limitation, so if your income or AGI, adjusted gross income, goes a above 200,000, you could end up with a phase out situation. That's the general idea that we want to be able to explain to somebody. If you have a qualifying child, they could raise your filing status if you're single to head of household, which could improve your tax rates. Number one. Number two, you might get a child tax credit per kid, which is usually $2,000 but it might be phased out if you have high income, income over 200,000, I believe, if single, 400,000, if married filing joint, and if you don't have much income, you might be limited to the amount of credit, but still get some of it due to the uh, refundable portion, the additional child tax credit. Okay, so is the amount on line eight more than blah, blah, stop, subtract, and, and so this is enter the amount from credit limit worksheet, the amount from the credit limit worksheet is is greater than the 2000 so we get the full 2000 which basically is pulling over to the form 1040 over uh here so boom 2000 if i mirrored that in my excel worksheet we could say okay that's going to be down here in our other credits so i'm just going to say other credits and then i'm just going to do the simple thing here i'm just going to say 2000 per kid so we had sam is 2000 or I could put 2000 here per kid 
And then if there was a, a adjustment to it, I, I would put the adjustment to it. And then I'm going to pull that over to the first page. 100000 same taxable income, no change there. Tax should still be calculated, you would think, at the 14266 But then I have this credit that brings the tax, the, the total tax down to 12266 Let's check that out. So hold on a sec. Oh, wait, I'm head of household now, though. Head of household, that's why we double check these things. We go from the standard deduction to head of the household. So that puts my taxable income 79200. So I'm gonna go back on over, does that make sense? 79200, okay, page two. Tax calculated now at the 11131. That's what the kids doing their work now. That's what the kids are for, lowering my taxes. I love <laughs> 11131 and so then we've got the 2000 and that's going to be the 9131 so there's the 9131 that we have here i'm going to get rid of these estimated payments we're not focusing on that right now and boom there we have it all right so let's say we had let's say we had uh two kids two kids uh going back on over now the the, the next one has diminishing returns. So you might not want to have the second kid because you know you don't get as big a tax benefit on it or whatever. <laughs> but because you're not gonna get a you're not gonna get to move from single to head of house you're already at head of household. So you'd have to marry someone if you wanted to get a better tax treatment than that. I'm not sure if that's worth it, worth it even with the tax benefit. No, I'm just kidding. Here we go. Let's do another All right, I got lazy with child two, which is called child two, child uh, two. And so oh you're not gonna name the daughter you you uh that's that's ridiculous that's sh chauvinist or something i don't know i just got lazy it wasn't like a intentional i'm not going to name the daughter one if if the son was born second i would have named the, the son child two as well uh but we have the the child tax credit still qualifying doesn't move from head of household so we're still at head of household so you still basically have the first page the same Second page, as you would expect, up to four hundred thousand or four thousand. Uh, we still haven't hit the income limitation. We still have income uh, to cover that or tax to cover that. So we're not dipping into the additional child uh, tax credit. If we go onto our worksheet over here, we're still looking at part number one for the credit for qualified children, uh, uh, child tax credit. Boom, boom. So now we just have two of them times the 4,000, and now we have the 4,000 calculation, which is pulling over. All right, let's go, <clears throat> let's go back to one child to make it easy so we can see what's happening, and then we'll take a look at the income limitation. All right, so I've taken one child off. Oh, you have to only keep one child, and you kept the son. Is that what happened? Is that how you, okay, that was just the first one that happened. It wasn't, that was just the first one that happened. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So if I go to page two, now I'm going to say there's an income limitation. That's the point that we're going to. There's an income limitation. So we're going to go over the 200,000. So let's say that we have income of 250,000. So we're going to go to the forms. And so now the credit has been removed. Let's bring the income down a little bit uh, to 220,000. Boom. Boom. And so we're gonna go back on over. Now there's partial credit. So if I go into here, we have our uh, income limitation worksheet. If I go into here, here's our child tax credit, 220,000. There's the, the limit of 200,000 and uh, it's phasing down the credit in essence to the 1,000 instead of the 2,000. Now, if they were married, I won't do it right now because we, well, we're running long on time, but if it was for if it was married you would expect it to double right so then you would have 400,000 and that would be your limiting your income limitation uh factor all right so now let's say the income was low so that we don't have enough income to cover we don't have enough tax to cover the credit so now we're going to say well what if my income was like uh 30,000 is that low enough if i go back on over page uh 1040 page number two so now you can see that if so that's good if i look at page one now we have thirty thousand. we still have the kid on the books and we're going to go we have standard deduction 
brings the taxable income to 9200 If I go to page two, then the, the tax is at the 923 So the kid's still doing his job because he, he brought us to head of household status, which brings the tax rate down. And we, we still have, but we only get the, the 923 it looks like, at first. And it's like, ah, I'm not sure this kid was worth it, man. You know, like I was supposed to get 2000 but that's just the that's just the 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 non-refundable portion because you still have the uh, additional child tax credit down here so then we have this one and we'll talk about later the kid might have helped you with the earned income credit so it's like all right all right the kid's doing his job maybe i'll keep feeding the little guy anyways so then if we go to the form 8812 We've got the credits for qualifying children. So here we have our calculation. So we've got the, the 2000 and so on and so forth, but it's limited to the 923 given our limiting worksheet here. That's when we then have to go to the next bit over here because it took the, the liability down to zero. And now we have the additional child tax credit kicking in because uh, because this is more of a welfare or so social security, I mean, safety net kind of program. So we have the subtraction, blah, blah. Then we have one times the 1,600 and da, 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 da. And we're taking the smaller, I won't go through the whole calculation here, but the basic idea is we're getting to the refundable portion of 1,077. And that's pulling over to the form 1040 page number two we've got the 1077 so even though my tax liability is zero we'll talk about the earned income credit later but if i combine that with the earned income credit then then we actually end up getting a quote refund end quote even though we didn't it's not really a tax right in that case obviously it's more of a welfare or or safety net uh, type of program okay so there's that now now, what if the what if we have a dependent that doesn't qualify as uh, for the child tax credit? So maybe they're too old, they're too old, and they don't qualify for the child tax credit, but they still qualify as a dependent. All right, so now they're going to still qualify. So we're going to go back on over and say, okay, if I go to the first page here, now we we have the uh, Sam here, but instead of checking off the child tax credit, he's too old right now. It's like, okay, I still, do I still get a benefit for this kid? You know, it's like, all right, man. If I go to page number two, he was really worth his, might've been worth it before, but now I got to kick this kid out because we have the tax being calculated. And, but then here, now I'm not getting, I'm not getting the 2000. I'm only getting 500. I'm only getting 500. Sam's not doing his job anymore. There's too, he's too old. So, you know, whatever, dude. But so that's what we have. It's a much lower credit, of course, if they don't qualify for the child tax credit, uh, it's going to be the 500 versus the 2000. So that's the general idea. You have to swap this kid in for a new one. Anyways, whatever.